The Equestria Inquirer is brought to you this week out of my own pocket. Me, the announcer. Who is John Geld? That's what ponies are asking after the new Ponyville Express train was made out of plodden and metal and was swarmed and dismantled by a legion of Paris sprites. Why ponies will be referring to John Geld is a mystery as it's obvious he had nothing to do with the disaster and is probably hiding in a mountain somewhere. Other phrases that make no sense are also popping up in Equestria, such as, Is Twilight the One? Turtles Can't Eat Turpentine? And My Sandwich Has Become Sentient? All of which are ridiculous and without meaning. The common expression, Pinkie Pie Has Eaten My Face, however, may also seem a meaningless expression, but is in actuality a common occurrence as Pinkie Pie has been experimenting with new forms of extreme close-up greeting. The only expression we've been able to uncover that is completely without use or meaning is, I'm Joe Stevens and this is the Equestria Inquirer! Good evening, Ponyville. Phillies and gentle colts. As you may already know, there has been a rising tide of worry in our economy. With the downturn in the equestrian economic outlook, we're seeing everything from Cloudsdale Rainbow Factory reducing rainbows to ugly gray streaks across the, across the sky to cut costs, to Sweet Apple Acres pretending Apple Bloom was adopted so they don't have to pay for her housing expenses, to the Canterlot Painfully Apocalyptic Horrors Experimental Foundation and Badminton Club losing all funding and abandoning their Return the Universe to a Singularity project. To make matters worse, allegations of job outsourcing have been laid onto the investment firm Main Capital. In addition to accusations of sending cloud manufacturing and Scootaloo containment field assembly jobs to other kingdoms, unreliable sources have confirmed that Main Capital is also executing wanton destruction across all of Equestria. The managers of Main Capital deny such accusations and maintain that the company is simply an investment firm and not a revenge-crazed mercenary bent on causing panic and fear in the hearts of all pony kind. In research of this story, unreliable sources show proof that the multi-billion bit investment company has a shady record. In one incident, Main Capital bought controlling interest in a cart-making factory, then halved its employees while reopening the factory in the Zebra Kingdom. In another incident, Main Capital broke the terms of a unicorn workers union contract in order to limit benefits payouts. And most recently, Main Capital held citizens of Trotham hostage while threatening to kill millions of ponies in an effort to spread anarchy and suffering amongst all those who dared witness. The company is also accused of having a bank account in another kingdom and of tearing apart small mammals with their bare hooves. <clears throat> Main Capital has not taken these accusations lying down. They're also denying that they are taking it with a counter-strike of brutality the likes of which the world will never recover from. In order to get the bottom of this story, Equestria Inquirer snuck a hidden microphone in one of Main Capital's board meetings. This is a sample of that meeting. As you can see, by eliminating excess personnel and automating production using a three-year amortization schedule, the ROI on current holdings in Philadelphia bode well for a 2% increase. Construction firms are lessening activities and have been showing difficulty in maintaining a 30-day payment schedule, however, which means that our plans to turn major avenues of transportation into explosive written death traps and hold all of Equestria in the grips of panic will be delayed by up to 48 hours. Of course, this can be made up through a diversified cash flow schedule from our consumer brands and by unleashing wholesale slaughter in Ponyville. Princess, uh, Princess Celestia has been openly critical of the activities of Main Capital for quite some time now. She has made comments that Main Capital should not be outsourcing, that they should be investing in Equestria, and of course, that they should not be killing ponies. In a speech last week, Celestia made the comment that Main Capital investors did not build the businesses they claim to have created, that they didn't build them, some pony else did. They didn't craft the carts they sell, some pony else did. They didn't start a militant uprising and create a genocidal civil war in the Griffin Kingdom, some pony else did. 
In response to these accusations, Maine Capital has released documents showing that it actually achieved positive, not negative, job growth and saved dozens of businesses that it invested in. They have also planted a thermonuclear bomb beneath Manhattan and claimed it will be detonated if their stock price ever trades at three percentage points off its quarterly estimate. Should Maine Capital be held responsible for the lagging economy, jobs being shipped overseas, and the inevitable breakdown of violent breakdown of civilized society? Polls indicate that a majority of equestrians believe so. However, unreliable sources do indicate that while accusations of Maine Capital killing jobs and killing ponies are true, they have also created a substantial amount of business opportunities, and the economy would be in much greater hardship were Maine Capital suit to cease investment activities. As one employee of a company owned by Maine Capital put it, <clears throat> they may be outsourcing, they may be slaughtering innocent ponies and destroying everything we once cherished in fire and pain. But at least they gave me a job. Hi. No Pony wanted to sponsor us this week, so I ended up doing it myself. I hope it's a good episode, because I really cannot afford to go any further into debt. You'd be amazed at not only how many things someone can break without rendering a voiceover guy like myself unable to work, but also at how much those other things hurt. So please, for the love of Luna, laugh at this episode. Wait, no, don't leave the page. Please, I, I got kids, okay? Uh, my God. Here, listen to this music. You guys like this music, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's nice and relaxing, like, right? Makes you want to stay and watch, huh? Please say it does. Please. Oh, sweet Celestia, they're going to take my eyelids. Comments from viewers outside of Equestria have brought to light the fact that a collection between Celestia Krat nominee Princess Celestia and Republican nominee Princess Luna for Princess of Equestria has implications beyond the borders of Equestria. And so, even though they are not allowed to vote, non-citizens have begun raising their opinions over which candidate they support. As such, we have sent Ivan to interview a citizen of Townsville, USA to get his perspective on the election. Since Ivan tried to turn our video camera into a table, the interview is audio only only and will be acted out by these figures. Let me play the audio now. Good evening. This is Ivan. Ivan is unicorn pony from Stalingrad. Ivan McTable is good for health. Ivan is here today in Ville Towns with Monkey What For interview, Joe of Mo. Welcome, Joe of Mo. I believe you are mistaken, Ivan, for my name is Mo Jojo. Jo, jo. Is what Ivan said, Joe of Mo. It is not Joe of Mo, it is Mo Jo Jo Jo. Were my name to be Joe of Mo, I would have introduced myself as such. But it is not, so I did not. Joe, not being my first name, would be incorrect, as that would mean my last name is Mo, which is not, for my name is Mo Jo Jo Jo. What for his problem? I even say name is Joe of Mo. That is not my name. Okay, is no problem. Name is what be, is good for him. So, Joe of Mo. Mo Jo Jo Jo. I even call you Slippy now. That is not my name either. If you insist on calling me things that are not my name, I shall choose not to acknowledge the question. If the question that is not Mojo Jojo, which is my name, is used to address me, I shall assume you are talking to someone who is not me, as that would not be my name, which is Mojo Jojo. Okay, so who is what for you endorse in election Princess of Equestria? I, Mojo Jojo, am endorsing the candidacy of Princess Celestia. Why for is you in favor Celestia? Princess Celestia is the ruler. She is queen. She is the greatest of all. She has vested those who oppose her in competition for that of champion and proven herself worthy. And why for not Luna? Princess Luna seeks to take power away from the one ruler who has succeeded in taking power. She desires to make democracy a republic, a system that allows for collective to band together and decide what best suits their needs. This at the expense of the powerful princess who has achieved greatness. Why should those who have earned their power give it up? I will agree. But maybe ask devil advocate question. Why not look out for common good? Common good? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> but you just did laugh. Then do not make me laugh a second time, for I shall. Okay. The myth of the common good is that great, 
Ponies should be brought down for the betterment of the masses. When in truth, the reason Princess Celestia is sole ruler is because she is great and worthy of her throne. Society should not exist for the betterment of the many, but to allow for the strength of those who have the power to rule and to create great things to become great. Greatness should be encouraged, not used. Those who can be great must be allowed to be great. Those who can rule an entire kingdom for a thousand years by themselves should be encouraged to do so without interference from those who would lessen their greatness. Great. And Luna, not for one this? Luna wants to disperse power in a democracy. Dispersing power will limit the ability for powerful to become more powerful and limit the ability to reach their true greatness. Which the system under Celestia, powerful ponies rise to the merits of their own abilities, not the will of the ponies. Is good point. Also, with only one ruler, I, Mojo Jojo, will be able to use my anti-magic ray to defeat Princess Celestia and become ruler of all Equestria. <laughs> Which is much easier with only having to defeat one member of a government to conquer it. So, Joe and Mo want for become princess? Yes. Wait. No. Princess Joe of Mo. <laughs> it would be Princess Mojo Jojo. I, I mean, King Joe of Mo. I, I, I mean. King Mojo Jojo! Okay, Jovmo. Has been good interview. <laughs> now, Ivan need what for directions go home. Has you roadmap or atlas Ivan could borrow? I disregard your request for an atlas. In fact, I shrug off the request. I laugh at that. <laughs> now vacate the premises immediately. I must plan my next evil scheme to defeat the Powerpuff Girls and Princess Celestia. Okay. Back to you, Joe Stevens. Thank you, Ivan. I hope we never have to do something like that again. And here's TechRat with this week's Mayors in a Minute. Joe? What are you doing in my bedroom? I'm here with a message of the future. will have to change. Change? What do you mean? You will be visited by three interns. The first will teach you kindness. The second will teach you tolerance. The third will teach you humility. Tonight's Mayors in a Minute was recorded in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> Ooh, something edible this time. <laughs> I wonder where this came from. It's from me, silly. <laughs> Derpy? Yep. I should have known. <laughs> well, thank you. That's nice. You're welcome. I love giving muffins to new co-workers. Co-worker? <laughs> That's right. I'm going to be your intern today. Oh, right. You're here to teach me tolerance. Well, that's good, I think. <laughs> Don't worry. Everything up here in the control booth is completely under control. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? Get it? Because it's a control booth. Yeah, I get it. So, um, have you ever done video production before? I've run the mail sorter at the post office. That's almost the same thing, right? Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't worry, Tech Rat. You can count on me. If you say so. I hope you're ready, because I'm going to start. Okay? Okay. It's been reported that the mysterious mayor do -well has once again been sighted gallivanting around Ponyville. Twilight and her friends deny involvement. So the question on every pony's mind is, who is the newest one to don the mask? Okay, Derpy, you need to show the first image. You got it! <laughs> uh, you need to make it a little bigger. <laughs> Derpy, that's too big. <laughs> Sorry, just getting used to the controls here. Oh, wait, watch this. Near, far, near, far, near, far, near, far. Derpy, we don't have time for this. Just put it somewhere in the middle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Move it to the left, Derpy. There's a little joystick on the panel up there that lets you slide the images around. Okay, hang on. 
Uh oh. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to move that image anymore. <laughs> that joystick's coming out of your pay, Derpy. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Though no one is certain of the Masked Avenger's current identity, Zakora has told us that Stephen Magnet has not recently been seen swimming in his usual river. As a matter of fact, many people have noticed... Derpy, what are you doing? Um, nothing? What Zakora is implying may make sense, as now Mayor Duell does seem to be about 50 feet long and sporting a fabulous mustache. Are you playing with the video filters? I'm sorry. It's just that there's so many pretty buttons up here. <laughs> yeah, well, don't press any of them. But I can't help it. They look like little muffins. Adorable little plastic muffins. This blue one can be blueberry. <laughs> and this red one can be strawberry. <laughs> and this orange one can be orange berry. <laughs> Stop trying my patience, Derpy. Whee! This is so much fun. Knock it off! What the heck is wrong with you? Are you trying to ruin my segment? Wow, you really do live up to your name, don't you? Why would you say that? That's so mean. I, I know I don't get things right all the time. I know I mess up a lot, but I was just having fun. I thought that was what your show was all about. I didn't mean to ruin everything. I'm so sorry. I I just don't know what went wrong. Uh, Derpy? Yes? Um, if you press that brown button, it makes the screen spin in a circle. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool! <laughs> I'm telling you, you know what? Put the rainbow filter on again. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious! Wait, wait. Watch this! Extreme close-up! <laughs> Derpy, please forgive me. I had no right to snap at you, and you're absolutely right. This show is all about enjoying ourselves, and it doesn't matter if there are little screw-ups now and again, because having fun is the most important thing. Exactly! I'm so happy to hear you say that! Miss Hooves, you can be my intern anytime. Aww. Yay! But I think it's time to go back to you, Joe, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to throw up. <laughs> no. No. Really, Derpy. I think I'm going to... This is something we haven't seen for a while. We have a new edition of the Orbital Truth Cannon. And as an added bonus, I'm told it's a musical. Take it away, truthy truth o true Current Events Concerto. <clears throat> Discord has again escaped his stone prison today When two ponies were debating the lyrics to Odalay Ah, uh, thank you for all that. And here is LT Moose with this week's Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. Horseshoes and hand grenades, we don't have to get it right on the first try. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crazy quilt. Will you ever win? Oh, hello. Welcome to Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. Thought I'd invite you into my parlor tonight to discuss something very dear to me. That being the comic book. Yes, these heralds of a new mythology. They have given us 
heroics to look up to, ethos to live by, and examine the existential crisis that comes with punching a jet-powered gorilla. Truly guides for modern living. It should come as no surprise that the medium is quite popular in Equestria. Fillies and cults of all ages have a colorful cavalcade of gate crusaders to choose from. Favorites such as Incredible Heck, Super Mustang, and the Martian Pony Hunter all have provided countless hours of entertainment, thrilling adventure, vigilante justice, and gorilla punching. Now, none have ever have had such an indelible mark on society. I speak, of course, of Mare Do Well. Now, since her latest movie, The Dark Horse Rising, is coming to theaters, I thought we could take a look back and witness the birth of a legend. It all began with Inspector Comics number 27, the first time Mare Do Well appeared in print. It may surprise younger fans to learn that the earliest incarnation of Mare Do Well had no qualms about using lethal force against evildoers, and would repeatedly stab criminals with her unicorn horn. Well, you see, we wanted to teach the youngins that crime didn't pay. So we thought, why not have a masked horse who lives outside the law and able to leap from the shadows and kill you if you stepped out of line? <laughs> now that's parenting. Mare Do Well's image was softened a few years later with the introduction of the wildly campy television show. Starring Eve East in the titular role, the series played up the do wellness and shied away from her murderous past. It is best remembered for its catchy theme, self referential humor, and bizarre guest appearances. Indeed. While using a rope may seem ha, counterintuitive, one must keep in mind the advantage of ha, stealth it bestows. Hi, Mayor Dwell. Greetings, citizen. Anything I can do to help? No! <clears throat> no, thank you. As a fully deputized officer of the law, it would be imprudent of me to ask you to put yourself in harm's way. Okie dokie! Trotham City may thank me more for that one deed than all my years of crime fighting. You don't even blink, do you? After the show was cancelled due to East's raging alcoholism and the outbreak of the Griffinese War, the character of Mare Do Well was largely forgotten. However, a new director with a unique vision was poised to bring her back to the forefront of popular pony culture. Well, I was always fascinated by the damaged psyche this mare must have. I, I began a project to return her to her darker roots. Also, she would fall in love with a pale, gangly pony and fight dream spiders. The producers declined the dream spiders, but they loved the idea of a grittier mare do well, and so did audiences. The first film was the highest grossing production in equestrian history. The sequel, Mare do well goes somewhere else, but then comes back again at a later point in time was equally well received. Unfortunately, Joel Schumacher took over production of the later films and effectively killed the franchise. That's right. Joel Schumacher exists in two universes and has ruined films in both. So great is his evil. Monsters do exist, and they come up with ideas such as the bat nipples. But was this really the end for Mare Do Well? Yes, it was. No? Really? I, I, I thought, because... No, no, you're the one with the computer. Far be it for me to question the internet, I just have a fancy suit. Although the films had failed, Mare Do Well found continued success in comic books and in the wildly popular animated show. The tone shifted to become more psychological and deconstructing of the superhero mythos. This led to the resurrection of the film franchise with the successful Dark Horse Trilogy, starring Christina Haybale. You thought that deep down, every pony is as ugly as you. 
You can't rely on any pony these days. You have to do everything yourself. Ponyville is full of ponies. Ready to believe in God! Until their spirit breaks completely. You see, madness is like twilight sparkle. All it takes is one late assignment. <laughs> Thank you, LTT Moose. If ever there was a time for peace in Equestria, it is now. We must come together as Equestrians and acknowledge that we may have problems. Things may look bad, but there is always hope. There is always the ability for great ponies to do good and great things. But don't do them too well, otherwise we'd have no horrifying disasters to cover, and where would the fun in be reporting that? I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been the Equestria Inquirer. Good night, and good luck. In the God of the Derby, baby, don't you know that I love you?